Hi, everyone. Welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday, the 2nd of October, 2020. I am Aiken Brain. I am, will be your host. We're going to go through our high power initiatives, uh, other initiatives, parking lot Q&A, all that good stuff. It's going to be a great one. I'm not sure it's going to be as good as last week. No, it's going to be better. It's going to be amazing. Let's get on with it. OK. Um, upcoming and shipped releases. Wait, hang on. We need a note taker. I forgot. That's terrible, isn't it? Lidl, well done. You're in the top left of my screen. Um, bad luck, good luck. I mean, it's all relative. Uh, thank you very much for volunteering yourself like that. Uh, cool, so let's move on. Anyway, so high priority, high priority initiatives. The first thing is upcoming and ship releases. Um, so just quickly shipped uh, JSIPFS 51 uh, a few days ago. Uh, it's great. It has types, it has types, OMG, mega lols, it has types. Um, I think they work, they work, it's great, it's amazing. Uh, it also gets rid of SecIO uh, and fixes a whole bunch of bugs. You should totally upgrade, please do. And there's a blog post, read the blog post for the lowdown. Uh, I can talk about Go IPFS. Yes. Um, yeah. So there will maybe be a release this week. I uh, we need to see. There's a couple things that need to get added. Um, the ping service work we'll talk about in a second is looking pretty good. Um, data store works looking good for that as well. Um, there's a quick upgrade we need to do, and then there are some. There's some GoLib PDP work they're working on improving the streaming. Um, there's some stream closures and all goodness with the interface. Um, so they're going to work on hopefully wrapping that up this week. Um, I would tentatively say that it's more than likely we will see the RC next week as opposed to this week with all of the madness happening in the world this week. Um, yes. Anything else shipped? Cool. Moving on. Pinning services. Pinning services. All right. So we have a data store based pinning services. The performance looks excellent. Um, and I think we're just waiting. Uh, I think we're going to do a final review on all of that. Uh, but as far as it working, it's great. I've got the migrations as well. And I will uh, check those, should be able to check those in a day. They look great both for forward and backward migrations. Um, and uh, I, other than that, I don't know that there's anything less left unless we want to uh, run it on some actual uh, customer data or something like that that we want you know, to verify it. But otherwise, uh, it looks like it should be ready to go this week, pending any uh, any review, any issues that come up. Um, so, not anticipating anything, anything, uh, any major changes, if if any at all. So, um, green light. If, if there's any questions on that, uh, nope. Then we're <laughs> moving forward with that as far as I know. For the next release. Yeah, uh, just a quick uh, PSA from the pinning service API spec front. Uh, there was a small patch release uh, which does not change the like wire format, but flips the way we do search based on pin names. So by default, it's now fast, exact name search uh, as a default. And if you want case insensitive partial, uh, then you need to pass match uh, parameter. Uh, so eventually, please switch. I think Go IPFS client already switched to the latest version. Uh, if not, it's uh, it's not a blocker. Uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of like softly backwards compatible change. But we flip the we flip the the default to more performant uh, thing as a part of broader refinement of our defaults in things like listing pins uh, or resolving stuff, we are switching to the most performant default because people often don't know there's a parameter which makes things faster. So we are making the default thing fastest. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Uh, next up is SecIO removal. Yeah, so that's all been released in JS. It's in, I, in Go and 
we are tentatively planning to do the flash on the bootstrap nodes this week. Um, once that's done and we've completely disabled from the bootstrap nodes, then we are also going to be uh, decommissioning the old DHT uh, booster nodes, which we now have Hydra to replace. So, Are we scheduling a, a, a shutdown? Um, or... Basically, we're just, the, the plan is to, to disable this on the on the booster node. So kind of a flash of remove sec IO for 24 hours on the, the bootstrap nodes. Um, see if anybody screams in our general direction. Um, if not, then we will decommission them fully next week or okay. remove sec IO from the boosters or bootstrap nodes next week. If there are complaints, they can send them to a pre-designated pub sub channel. Which of course they won't be able to because they won't have Seco, or they won't have noise enabled. Either. Lol. Um, so the the Hydra nodes, they basically like didn't. So we hardened the network against civil attacks earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. and the, the Hydra nodes are basically a civil attack on our own network. Do they still work? So the Hydras are Sybils, but they're not they're not an attack. Um, so if you look at like the, the Hydras work, the the main thing what they do is they you get better coverage. On the network, um, so we've we've basically done the calculation to get pure solid peer ID distribution. So if you look at your routing table over time, you'll have some hydro nodes in there, but they're not overwhelming your node, right? Like the whole point of the DHT hardening, like the blog post that we posted last week. This is I connect to your node and then I take over your entire routing table. This is not what the hydro nodes do. Um, it's a it's a Sybil for good. Um, but yeah, pub public nodes are innately, um, public networks are innately susceptible to, to attacks. Um, we've just made that very expensive to do. And we are not going to spend the money to attack ourselves because that would be silly. Fair enough. Okay, moving on. JS improves discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so I got uh, the custom analysis filter function now ready for review. This basically allows users to, for example, filtering out private or loopback addresses in order to not advertise them to other peers on the network. With that, I also implemented a custom dial address sorter. And uh, the goal of this is to is allowing uh, for, for example, uh, we start by dialing known public addresses and only trying private addresses if we cannot uh, uh, dial the public ones. Uh, so in, in the auto relay area, I worked on this. Uh, then in the, in the rendezvous side of things, I, I got back to it. Uh, it's still not using the discovery API, but I have a PR with the, the rendezvous integrated uh, and with tests and everything. And it's ready for an initial review, as well as the, the rendezvous implementation itself. Uh, and then I basically started working on some examples. Uh, we uh, started with the auto relay. I've mostly done the, the, the example for it, but I will also leverage this opportunity to create tests for this example, which is a thing that we have been delaying for a long time in Lipid2P as all our examples don't have tests. And every time we want to do a release, we need to manually check them all. So I want to start doing tests from now on on them. And uh, after this, I will also start creating an example for the rendezvous. And yeah, that's it. Cool. <clears throat> Adding tester examples is a good idea. Just saying. So it saves so much time. Um, so I have added in a new item in there, which is bidirectional streaming and, and streaming errors in the browser. Um, in brief, what this is is, Due to the limitations of current browser technology, we cannot uh, stream things backwards and forwards at the same time. Um, you have to create a form data object before you can like upload a directory for the files, for example, um, which requires consuming the entire stream before you start sending it, which is really boring because you can't start receiving uh, data until you've sent all the data. Um, so the solution, so the other problem is the streaming errors that uh, the existing HTTP API, what it does is it puts all the errors in HTTP trailers, uh, which is fab, except for no browser supports HTTP trailers. 
Um, so if you're streaming a whole bunch of stuff to the server and there's an error, it gets put into the um, trailer and never arrives, or at least it never gets processed by the browser. The stream effectively just stops and you think, cool, beans, I'm done, except for you're not done. There was an error and you never saw it. Um, so it's not, not great. Um, so the solution to this kind of stuff is doing uh, some kind of RPC over a medium that you can stream bidirectionally and you can wrap errors and that kind of thing. So um, like WebSockets is the obvious one to use. Um, so I, look at, look, I was looking into uh, gRPC today, um, works in Node, it's great. It doesn't work in the browser because it goes over HTTP. Um, in Node, it uses HTTP2. Uh, which is not doesn't seem to be supported in any browsers, uh, so that's kind of problematic. So it might end up switching to something like uh, JSON RPC because that does work over WebSockets. Um, there are a whole bunch of kind of uh, like issues around. Hey, are you going to add support to gRPC to do it over WebSockets? And they're like, Nah, nah, you can just use HTTP two. It's like, oh no, I can't, I can't use it. Um, so you might not be able to use gRPC, which is a shame because. You know, it's quite well understood um, and the pro buffs are nice and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, anyway, so looking into that, I just started uh, knocking around with that today. So more updates next week, but that will be rad and will solve lots of problems for us. Any questions? Does that mean you're looking at uh, using it at GRPC as is or looking at providing some sort of extension to use WebSockets? Um, I mean, I'd like to use gRPC uh, if the, if it's if it's if we can do it over WebSockets, um, that would be rad. But if it ends up being a whole ton of work, I would just going to use something else um, because I don't particularly want to be maintaining like the infrastructure around the thing. I just want to use the thing and get it shit. Um, I would just check before you go on the whole endeavor whether or every browser can connect to the WebSocket on localhost uh, because there are some content security policies that I think might prevent you from doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm having to shake that stuff out of the tree as I go along. Okay. Cool, that is the end of the high priority initiatives. Uh, moving on to other initiatives, so um, improving web UI file out. Uh, no updates this week on that. Um, and the TypeScript stuff, uh, I I have a few other pull requests that I've added that it's more typings to the things. Yeah, I merged the one with the um, examples in. Uh, cool. So it's gonna ship that um, probably tomorrow morning. Thanks. Cool, so uh, Badger 2 support. Uh, as far as Badger 2, there's not really been any movement. Um, we're still waiting to see if they're going to come out with another major release uh, that has the features we need in it. Uh, but other than that, there's no, there hasn't been any updates and no changes. We're ready to go on our end, but um, you know, what is it? we need a, our actual release from Badger to, to move forward with those features. Yeah, based on the current state, we likely won't land until 0.9. We're going to shift the OERC in the next week or two. Cool. Uh, DNS adder resolving in JS. Yeah, so the multi other DNS adder resolvers are now then merged and released. Uh, it's just we just have a pending PR on Lib2P, which basically resolves the DNS adder uh, on, the, on the dial. Uh, it's uh, already working, uh, and uh, Jake already did the first review. And uh, I'm also talking with uh, uh, Michael Burns from the Infra team because uh, we I, I can now connect to all the Bootstrap nodes, but uh, some of the TXT records still have or unreachable addresses or addresses that uh, provide certificate errors because we will be using DNS4 or DNS6 for the WebSocket addresses because of the browser issue with SSL. But uh, we are still having in the TXT records the IP addresses using the WebSockets that needed to be removed. 
and yeah, so I think we are pretty close on this. That's awesome. Um, Nacho version? Yeah, we've got a very long work stream coming up. Uh, moving it here for now, likely we'll move it up on the priority list, but we're still working on the work plan here. Uh, there's a bunch of things that potentially need to get done for this to land. Um, we're just figuring out exactly what that what that work plan is, because um, we need to deal with things like simultaneous connect, uh, which has implications on multi-stream and all kinds of stuff. So we are working on figuring that all out. Radical. Um, that is the end of the other initiatives. Um, so moving on to the rest of the items. So uh, design review proposals. Anybody got anything to propose? I mean, I will have uh, some of the stuff I'm doing with um, the streaming will probably go to design review, uh, but not this week. Oh, I think that I will have a, a design or, or at least a, um, a review, review of proposed actions for a revision of garbage collection. Um, I don't have that yet, but either late this week or next week. And I don't, um, I don't know if there's anybody who would like to volunteer for looking at working on that with me uh, when I have a proposal for the design. But that's, that's going to be coming up here likely next week. Yeah, if you have a um, you have a, a time that you want to allocate for that um, or organize a meeting, feel free to plop your plop your thing in the design proposals, and then we can solicit solicit names to join that. All right, excellent. I will. I'll take care of that later this week. Um, if there are no more design review proposals, then moving on to blockers and asks. Questions? Um, I actually have a question about the thing you mentioned earlier, Alex, about the WebSocket. Uh, does it mean we'll have a API on a server for both Go IPFS and JS IPFS to talk to, or is that somehow gonna overlay existing API? Um, so the approach is, well, so I'm doing it in JS IPFS first, um, just so we've got something to talk about. Um, and then someone can implement that in Go IPFS. Uh, the initial thing will be to basically just tackle the streaming uh, API, so there's only a handful of them. And then fall back to the HTTP client for everything else, so that should allow us to ship something usable quickly. Um, and then if everyone's happy with it, we can look at expanding it to, to go IPFS as well. That's just because of my expertise yeah. in JS rather than Go, but yeah. Yeah, I was just trying to understand. Uh, so it would be like V1 of APIs that is different streaming, is that, is that correct or? Sorry, I don't follow it. V1 of the API? Uh, yeah, so we have a V0 uh, HTTP API, so it would be like V1 WebSocket API. Um, kind of thing. Yeah, maybe like it'd probably be V0 as well, just running on a different port as a different process. Um, but yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't see a good reason to have both HTTP and a WebSocket API apart from fallback. Um, like the HTTP API isn't going anywhere. Like there is, you know, there's too much stuff built on top of it. Um, this is like, it's just a case of like, do you want to pile more stuff onto that? Or do you want to have something else? I'm like, kind of my preference is generally for something else. Cause then you can also turn it on and off um, as required. And yeah, I don't know. Anyway, this will be like the design kind of question. Uh, moving on to the parking lot. Yep, um, I've added a link to uh, kind of like to kick off a discussion about how do we represent DNS link domain names on the public gateways. So long story short is that if you have uh, like docs, IPFS IO 
uh, it has a DNS link. You can load it from a local gateway. It will be docs.ipfsio.ipns.localhost. The problem is, uh, like on localhost, it's fine because there's no TLS. The problem is if you want to load it from a public gateway and it's not the original gateway that is backing that domain name, let's say you want to load it from the web link or maybe Cloudflare's subdomain gateway. Right now, it won't work because uh, TLS certificates are, if you want to have a, like a wildcard uh, TLS certificate, that's possible only for a single level of uh, DNS names. And uh, that works for CIDs, that works for lip 2 p keys. Uh, the problem is if you want to put a domain name as an identifier, domain names have dots which split into more than one DNS label. And that means it's impossible given both, like technically maybe possible, but uh, due to terms of service, uh, it's impossible to easily mine uh, that type of certificate on the fly. And there's no multi-level wildcard uh, available. So uh, the idea is, there, there are like different ideas and pros and cons listed on the issue. Uh, but I think the most promising one is to come up with some simple encoding where we remove dots and fit in the single label. Uh, limit is 63 characters, but I think for most of websites, that's plenty enough. Um, so if you, anyone has any thoughts, uh, just comment on the issue, uh, sanity checks or like encoding proposal, anything. And if we figured out something solid, that will be probably a design review proposal. Uh, but for now, just uh, take a look. Cool, anything else in the parking lot? Okay. Uh, Anything from oh. Rockley? Or did you already talk about that? Did I have something? TS interfaces? Was that carried over? Oh, uh, I see it's carried week. over, right? We talked last week. Oh. Okay. Um, we have one that's going to get four minutes back. Amazing. Uh, thank you very much for coming, everyone. Uh, this has been the IPFS uh, Weekly Sync for Monday, the 2nd of November 2020. Stay safe out there. It's a crazy world and it's only going to get crazier, um, which is awful. But, you know, actually, no, it's all good. Have fun. See you on the internet. Bye.